let us try to understand how we look at him and how we apply those principles as i said at the beginning we can go over so many more of his stories but we need to sort of take glimpses from his life and then try to apply it in our life and i'm sure you also remember that in the days of his khilafa he had these tear marks on his face because he used to cry so much and he would say if i knew all the people will be going to jannah and only one will be left behind i'm so scared what if it's me and then he would cry say allah please let this one person not be me and then he said if all the people were going to jahannam put in hell fire and one would be saved i pray i beg allah subhanahu wa taala this is me this was the kind of accountability he kept for himself imagine his dynamic personality imagine his zoom speed for doing good deeds for reaching out to people but this is what he was like he got this one title you know his title al farooq what does that mean the one who distinguishes between right and wrong yes the one who distinguishes between right and wrong how do you do that clarity of thought because clarity of thought is an ability to gather and differentiate all incoming stimuli into a clear definition of what you should be acting on and how you should be resolving an issue and if you look at his life and all the glimpses we saw imagine the kind of intention he left his home with before he was a muslim and he heard quran the clarity he had he knew he had to pray and he also knew how the muslims were being tortured the clarity he had to pray in jama the clarity he had on justice to muslims and non muslims the clarity he had for his family what they can do but they can't do the clarity he had when picking governors for his system the clarity he had to help people like look at any aspect of his life he lived up to this title al farooq clarity this is a weapon to the seeker of knowledge the more clarity you have the more you will be able to practice it and that's why many times when we are sitting in our quran class and there are verses after verses being recited we are totally entangled in our snapchat instagram uploads what my friends will say oh my god this is the verse we have just covered how will i apply it if i do this thing will i get social acceptability and the moment you go into those areas you lose that clarity you energize through the verses you enjoy the verses you take little bit of a guilt and then you keep moving on so how do you handle that the first thing if we want to work on this clarity of the thought the experts say you need to learn to de-stress yourself when the thoughts they are hovering around you they are bringing back those problems repeatedly what will my friend say what will so and so say how will i handle this what will i do about this that's when they say you are left with very little of the working memory what is working memory working memories which helps you take decision in that given time because of the stress level you have taken all your memory all your functioning mind all your gray matter into that stress area you need to learn to de-stress that is why allah subhanahu wa taala has given us salah five times a day if we focus on our salah you will be able to de-stress yourself if you have full tawakkul on allah subhanahu wa taala full reliance on allah subhanahu wa taala the moment you read a verse of quran and you tell yourself if allah says so it couldn't be bringing a bundle of problems it's not possible if allah says cover yourself even if the whole world tells me you're looking ugly i can't be looking ugly why would allah want me to look ugly i am more than 100% sure 
Allah is saving me from some fitna. And I am going to put it into practice. This is the kind of clarity you need to have. This is what we learn from Umar bin Khattab. He never looked back. He never has second thoughts. He just did it. Imagine that story when I told you that that woman was cursing the Khalifa on his face. What would you do in that situation? You'll become suicidal. Mental illness on peak. Facebook status. Snapchat. Rona dhona. <laughs> and then keep doing what you're doing with your life. Resign from the job. I'm, I'm such a sinner. Just confess in different places and do nothing. What did he do? He had clarity. Solution. And he moved on to solution. So that is why we are piling a load of depressors, anxiety loaders, guilt, shame. You name all the negative emotions, we are only loading ourselves with it. I namaz padhti hu, maza nahi aata. My, my namaz, my iman level is so low. I mean, I'm studying Quran, I still haven't changed. Why? Because you lose that clarity. You don't live with that clarity. So every day when you sit in a class and there are 100 thoughts which are cluttering your mind, you tell yourself, I'm putting them aside. Right now I'm focusing on this verse and I'm going to think of ways to practice this verse. If today I'm not able to do it, no problem. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. I'll try my whole life. I'll keep working on those. Second important thing they say about clarity of thought is you simplify your life. It was so amazing because the moment I read that, because I was going over the life of Umar bin Khattab. The experts of these times say, if you want clarity of thought, you need to have a simpler life. Because if you have too much external stimuli, they clog up the work to do. They choke you. Look at your closet. Look at your table, food table. Look at your study table. Look at your bags. There's so much clutter in that. That is not going to give you clarity. Then you need to have to-do list, the priority list with you all the time. This is Salah time. This is my to-do list. All halal. Seeking pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar bin Khattab, anhu, he lived with this clarity, the do list, what Allah commands and how Rasulullah practiced it. And you know, when he went on to that Tarawi thing from 8 to 20, some of the companions said, isn't it a bidah? He said, no, it's not. It's giving them relaxation. It's a nafal salah. And that's where we also need to understand. Remember, we also started with this, uh, how his personality was before Islam and how it got channelized after Islam. And I told you, Many of us are rebellious at home. We are giving attitude to our, especially parents, moms, husbands, in-laws. When we are studying Quran, we agree 500% with the verses. Sometimes when people in front of us at home, they are also telling us, maybe to me thi. This is exactly what I used to tell you. And our insight says, yes, she was right all along. But we don't admit it. If you're headstrong, if you have been rebellious in your life, channelize it. If you have channelized it, the same negative trait is the flip side of the coin. It is positive one for you. How? You, you were rebellious. You want your own life. You want to live in the moment. You want to take decisions for your own self. You have always been telling your family back off. You had been the thrill seeker. You had <coughs> indulged in haram activities just to test them out. We always live in such long lists. And when we study Quran, what we need to do is apply same principles in a positive manner for Akhira. That's all you have to do. Once you try to change yourself, you, you, you don't look like your own self and you get tired and you get exhausted and you're not able to carry it for a long period of time. 
That's what we find out from the personality of Umar bin Khattab. He didn't transform himself. He was the same aggressive man, same headstrong man, same stubborn man. But once he had Quran in his hand, once he looked through the sunnah of the Prophet he used all these traits for his benefit, for his productivity, for his akhira. That's all you have to do. Don't change yourself, just channelize it. How would you do that? Because we live with this false perception that people who are headstrong, they want things done their way, they have negative characteristics, like they have too much ego, uh, they are unwilling to accept that they are wrong, they are hot-tempered, they are self-centered, they are fearful of unknown that's why they don't uh, try so many things that are given out to them from quran and sunnah they want controlling they get defensive when somebody tells them you are not right but what we can do is we can teach them use the same traits in a better way how if you're stubborn if you're headstrong if you're rebellious you know what you want and you're very clear about what you don't want just apply the same principle for quran and sunnah Look into the life of Umar bin Khattab. He was very clear. He didn't live with ifs and buts. So now you can again be clear. If you had uh, always been taking a stand for yourself, refusing your parents, refusing your family, doing what you wanted to do, your mother didn't want you with a particular friend, and you still managed to be with that friend. Your parents didn't want you to create social media accounts, they gave you limited access to net and phone, but you still managed all the accounts every day. Use it for deen. How? That means you have the capability to withstand all negative pressures. So now you move that pressure or resisting that pressure from your parents to your friends, to the society. If you could go against the wishes of your parents, that means... You can go against the wishes of your friends. If someone t- tells you, this is a guy, he's really interested in you. Can I share your number with him? Can I add you to so-and-so group? You can say no. Because it was so easy for you to rebel and say no. So now you, you can easily say no in the right places. You resist the path of pleasing people. You don't follow the same fashions that they are following. You are not going to please your friend who's sitting next to you, who's putting pressure on you for everything. If I'm not coming today, you don't come. If I paper chat, you also paper chat. If I spend five minutes extra in cafeteria, you also stay with me. No matter what she does, you say, no, I'm not doing it. I'll be my own person at this time. So you stick to your guns. Second important thing is the people who rebel, who have been stubborn, who had been headstrong, they they are more decisive. So again, use it for deen. Now you can be more decisive. This is haram, I'm not doing it. This is halal, I will do it. And you push aside those people who are giving you other ideas. Then you also know or also understand how to pave your own path. You follow your heart needs with determination. You listen to your heart. That's what you had been doing all your life. Everyone told you, Peta, don't be with this kind of crowd. Peta, be careful on social media. Peta, when you're working on a project with the guys, don't talk to, so much to them. But if you were determined, your heart said, life be fun to hona chahiye. Everyone is enjoying their life. I should also enjoy my life. And we say, hmm, 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 to mom and dad, and we do what we feel like doing. So now that you have studied Quran, you got the Furqan, you become Farooq. Say, I know what's right, I know what's wrong. So, no, sorry, I'm not doing it anymore. If I see tens of people who are following Quran, but they're putting up weird pictures on Snapchat and Instagram, I will be putting nice pictures, decent pictures of nature, but I wouldn't be putting up the same kind of picture because looking at this one snap that has been uploaded, it's not appropriate. Why should I take that pressure? 
I'm determined to stick to what I understand is right. So you move past all onlookers and unbelievers. Let's say you're at a wedding. It's a mixed wedding. There has to be a total difference between a Quran student, somebody who understands Quran and Sunnah, and someone who has never been to such classes. We don't look down on them, but there's a difference. What difference the Christians felt when Umar bin Khattab walked into Jerusalem? What difference did they feel? What were they looking forward to? What did they see? Did it embarrass Umar bin Khattab? No, it didn't. His simple lifestyle, he was determined. He said, I'm fine with all this. And stubborn people, they are not close-minded people. They listen to others, but they don't get swayed by all the opinions and they make up their own mind these are the things that you need to work on and the moment you start working on these areas inshallah you will feel the impact from the personality of umar bin khattab i mean you feel embarrassed before every situation and you're a wedding you're not in a that up to the dress up to the according to the situation hmm. then we feel a little about ourselves you have to preempt the situations. You have to land in the situation thinking this is the this is what the regular scenario is. I have to go there with the full confidence. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.